Hello everyone, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up thank you. Did you know on General Hospital that Maxie Jones has a death curse attached to her love life? Do you have any idea how many of her past partners and lovers died by violence? Check it out. This is the transcript of our General Hospital video on all the dead men left in a trail behind Maxie Jones. Does loving her come with a death curse? See all our show videos by subscribing to our YouTube channel. So many guys that she has been involved with have died in terrible ways, and we want to talk about that today. And we want to thank Twitter user Canadian Fuzzy, who gave us this idea in response to our Michael Corinthos death curse article which you can find here. Because a lot of women he's been with have died. And Canadian Fuzzy said, Now do one on Maxie's curse, her number is double Michael's lull. It's not quite double, but it is stunning, and you won't believe it. I'll tell you right off the top of the head, there are seven men she's been involved with that have died. Three of them were cops, so they should just keep Maxie away from anybody who works because she is quite literally the kiss of death on General Hospital. So let's start with her very first boyfriend, Jess Boudry, who was Lucky Spencer's partner. And way back then he was played by Matt Maricini. That's who played Jesse Boudry, and they met when Maxie Jones was in the hospital for heart issues. And Jesse was on the run, hiding from the police. He had been framed. He was a police officer, but then he had been accused of this crime falsely and so he lost his police privileges, and he was running around, but she fell for him and helped him hide out. And eventually, he got his badge back, and they fell for each other. Jess and Maxie were first loves. And while working with Lucky, Jesse was shot in the head and died. Despite brain surgery, he was declared brain dead. This happened from summer 2005 to spring 2006. And boy, Maxie was on a roll with guys that died that were in her life. And that was the first one, Jess Boudry. Now, let's dig into the next one. Cooper Barrett, played by Jason Gerhardt. She referred to him as Coop instead of Cooper. He was her next love. She lost Jesse in spring 2006. Then in January 2007, Cooper Barrett came on the scene and he lasted a year before Maxie's death curse struck again on General Hospital. He was an Iraq War veteran who became a police cadet. He was Sonny Corinthos's inside man. Sonny placed him into the cadet program so that he'd have somebody at the General Hospital, so that he could keep his mob activities away from the police. Now, Maxie first met Cooper when he was a hostage taker. He was one of the people who stormed the Metro Court back in the day. He was masked and using the name Three. Then, Maxie unmasked him and saw how hot he was and helped him get away. This was back when Maxie was a very devious bad girl. She soon found out Three's real name was Cooper Barrett, whom she called Coop. Next, she helped him cheat his way into the academy, which she knew he was doing at Sonny's behest. But he had died of an apparent suicide. That was how it came out because he was facing accusations that he was the text message killer. And then he was found hung to death. And so people assumed that was a guilty action, but it wasn't. In fact, the real text message killer had faked his hanging. And if you remember way back then, the real text message killer was Diego Alcazar. So poor Coop was her second dead cop boyfriend. Logan Hayes was the next guy to come along and his run was March 2007 to July 2008, and Logan was played by Josh Duhon. He was another Iraq War veteran who worked for Sonny, and he was actually a friend of her prior dead boyfriend, Coop. So, Maxie and Logan and Cooper had been blackmailing Scotty Baldwin on General Hospital. But it turned out that Scotty was actually Logan's biological father. So, it was very messy and Logan was hot for Maxie, even when she was with his friend, Coop. And then again, reminder, this was her bad girl phase. Maxie and Logan made a bet. She bet him if he could get Lulu Spencer into bed, then she would sleep with him too. 
that she would cheat on Coop with him, and that was back when Lulu and Maxie were frenemies. They weren't best friends, they were rivals, and Maxie used to do bad things to her. As a matter of fact, Logan did get Lulu in bed, and then he started to really fall for Lulu. But the whole bet thing with Maxie came out, and Lulu was furious and just told him to go away. Then he was furious at Maxie and attacked her, and Lulu saw him do it, and she ran to the rescue. There was all this chaos, and Lulu stabbed him to death to save Maxie. So that was the third guy by 2008 that Maxie had been with who died. Now the next person we're going to talk about is somebody that wasn't a long-term love of hers or anything. It was a one-night stand, but he did end up dying violently, so we have to include it. That's the way these things work, and that is Franco. The role was originated by Hollywood actor James Franco. If you don't remember this, he approached General Hospital and asked if he could be on this part. And he was this A-list celeb, so they said okay. So James created the role of Franco, artist slash serial killer. And he had his real-life mom, Betsy Franco, playing Franco's mom. So it was very weird. Back then, Maxie was working for Crimson Magazine and Franco was this famous artist before we knew he was a serial killer on General Hospital. So she was tasked to get him to do this photo cover shoot, and then slept with him. When James Franco was in the role, it was November 2009 to 2010. He was this big-time artist. Maxie immediately regretted their one-night stand, because she was in love with Spinelli. And then, Jason supposedly killed Franco, and that was it. Then, they hired Roger Howarth to play Todd Manning from One Life to Live. But a lawsuit between Prospect Park and Bardet. And so they resurrected Franco and put Roger Howarth in the role. And years later, Franco was shot and killed by Peter August, who's another of Maxie's lovers that wound up dead. So, although Maxie wasn't dating Franco at his time of death, still, another dead lover who had been in her bed, and then wound up pushing up daisies. Do you remember this guy? Levy Dunkelman, Aka Peter Harrelger, played by Zachary Garrard. This was spring 2014 to fall 2014. Maxie Jones had been off in Europe and other places doing this kind of eat, pray, love thing. And she met Livy, this really cool vegan, hippie dude. They became lovers while doing volunteer work. What Maxie didn't know was it wasn't a casual meet-cute. Levi specifically hooked up with her. It was about revenge on her parents Felicia Scorpio and Mac, and the Aztec Jewel story from the 80s. Because Peter Harrelger, Levi's dad, was somebody they had a raw deal with years ago, and it wound up ugly on General Hospital. So, Senior was holding a grudge against them and tasked his son to get revenge. So when Levi and Maxie came to town, Nathan West, another future dead lover, was subletting her apartment. But Maxie demanded they be able to stay there too. So it was really awkward with all three there. And of course, Nathan's walking around looking hot. And how can you not notice that? But Nathan and Maxie were at odds and did not like each other. Things got worse because Levi sabotages Nathan to discredit him, which made Maxie dislike Nathan more. Levi and Maxie were gonna get married. That's how he thought he'd get the Aztec jewels. By then, Nathan figured out Levi was a really bad guy. The wedding turned to chaos. Peter Harrell, sir, tried to stab Maxie with an Aztec dagger. Nathan shot and killed him. Then, Levi attacked him, but Maxie stabbed her fiance to death. Next on the list is Nathan West, who was her third police officer lover that died. Ryan Pavey played Nathan from January 2014 to February 2018. He had a four-year run on General Hospital. A lot of people still really miss Ryan Pavey. If you don't remember Nathan's backstory, his birth name was James Nathan Reeves because Madeline Reeves raised him. But that was at the request of her sister, Liesl Obrecht, who was Nathan's birth mother. His biological father was Uber criminal Cesar Faison and Liesl was terrified Faison would take Nathan from her and warp him. So she let her sister raise him. 
He grew up thinking sketchy Madeleine Reeves was his mother. Then he came to General Hospital as a police officer. Although Nathan and Maxie did not get off to the best start, they sparked after Levy's death and fell deeply in love. At the time of his death, Maxie was pregnant with their son James, who Nathan would never meet. Faison came to town, creating havoc and doing bad and violent things. And he rampaged at the Crimson offices and shot Nathan in front of Maxie, who was screaming. That ties directly into her most recent lover who died, Peter August, who was Faison's other son and Nathan's half-brother. Peter was there when Nathan was shot, but no one knew then he was related to Nathan or Faison, so Nathan came through surgery, and he woke up so Maxie thought, this is great, he's going to survive. Their baby started kicking in her belly. Nathan touched her bump, felt his unborn child kick, and told Maxie, I love you like there's no tomorrow. And then he died. Maxie Jones' most recent fatal romance is, of course, Peter August, Aka Hemrick Faison, who was Nathan's half-brother. His mother was Alex Merrick. Although for a while, Anna Devane had thought he was because of implanted memories. Still, she cared for him as if he was her son, even though she finally realized he was her nephew. He had a run on General Hospital that was pretty lengthy. Wes Ramsey played Peter from November 2017 to his death in February 2022. Peter was just horrid, but he did love Maxie. They got closer after Nathan died when she was pregnant with Nathan's son. Recall, Peter was with her when she went into labor in the car. And Peter who delivered her baby. So she really gave him the benefit of the doubt. They bonded and she fell for him. But he was evil, truly face and son, down to his black heart. He lied and deceived everyone about who he was why he was in Port Charles and his agenda. When Maxie finally figured out he was bad, she was pregnant by then. He's the father of her daughter, Louise, and he went completely insane. So Maxie convinced him the wicked nurse he hired to watch her stole their baby right after she gave birth. This is actually at the time we met Dr. Austin Gatlin Holt, also played by Roger Howarth. He delivered her baby out in the woods. And then she handed the baby off to Brooklyn Quartermain to pretend it was hers. This was so convoluted, such a episode. BLQ was wearing a fake baby belly. She had had this one-night stand with Valentin Cassidine and convinced him she was pregnant. That was to get the ELQ shares away from him. So it was a dual-purpose plot where Maxie was able to place Luis with BLQ. She could still see her and convinced everyone that the crazy nurse Peter hired took the baby and ran. But the nurse was dead in a pit in Nixon Falls. Maxie tricked her and the bad chick fell to her death. And Peter really wanted his baby but could not find her. Then, once he figured out Luis was hiding in plain sight, all hell broke loose. Towards the end, Peter actually died twice and almost a third time. He poisoned Harrison Chase, brother of Dr. Hamilton Finn, and Finn and Peter had a confrontation on the roof of General Hospital, and Peter threw the antidote away. Then, Finn threw Peter down a flight of stairs, and he and Liz Weber thought the guy was dead. They chumped him into a freezer, but when they finally came back around to dispose of the body, it was gone. Brad Cooper also poisoned him, but he survived that too. But then he died for real, and the question was, how did he die? Well, he completely snapped. He was going to kill Maxie Jones. But her mother Felicia whacked him upside the head. He might survive with medical attention. But Anna Devane sat there at his side, so he wouldn't die alone. But she let him bleed out from that head wound. And that is the seven guys who died as part of Maxie's death curse. She does have a higher death count of ex-lovers than Michael but it's not double. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our General Hospital Update News channel and stay with us.